Tonight on Real Families, obsessive behaviour that can tear family life apart. He does annoy me, yeah? You can't tell you now. He does, does he, I think. A portrait of a husband and father devastated by obsessive compulsive disorder. I have got deep thoughts, but also you will kill me. And of a family learning to cope with his crippling mental illness. Yeah, I don't want to about it. If I'd have known now what I know, I don't think I'd have gone near him, to be honest. <laughs> no, I'm not very well. <laughs> I'm just I'm just living hell. I'm living hell, mate. Hugh Turner has suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder for more than 40 years. Hugh is trapped in a world of endless order, symmetry and repetition. His compulsive rituals mean he hasn't been able to work for the past 16 years. And Hugh's rituals cannot be completed until he's counted 12 lots of 12 on his fingers. It's a set of numbers he's driven to repeat again and again. 12 has always been my favourite number for some reason or other, like, you mean? 12. I started off with one lot of 12s, then it was another two lots of 12s, then three lots of 12s, till eventually it comes to 12 lots of 12s, I'm counting. But if I don't do it on my hands, I do it in my mind. Everything in Hugh's entire house has its own special place and must be precisely measured, exactly positioned. I do measure with my fingers and my lines and things like that. They are on certain angles. From the first line of the dog's paw there, I'm very happy that when it's that line there, perfect, it's okay. From the living room, it's my cottages, my open control boxes. Everything in this house is gonna be perfect. It could take me up to 10 to 15 minutes just to put a pack of bacon in the fridge, but it's actually got to be at the sides. This is the way my rituals are. These ornaments, or any item in the house, is not in a perfect position. My anxiety is really bad. Unfortunately for Hugh, his anxiety is really bad quite often. And keeping everything in the house perfect isn't easy, living with the other five members of his family. There are sons Michael and Mark, wife Maureen and daughter Joanne, whose learning difficulties mean Hugh and Maureen have even more childcare responsibilities with grandson Julian. Here's a kiss. Mm. God love you. Love you to bits, don't we, eh? Hugh's rituals can last for up to 18 hours a day. It's exhausting, but he's driven by an all-consuming fear. If I don't do these rituals, I find great harm's going to go to my children. Either my grandchild's going to be kidnapped, my wife's on a bike, there's a tanker or a wagon coming to the side of her, a bus or something like that, knocks her off her bike. Michael might go out and he might get stabbed. Mark, I fear he may go in the ring and meet one mean bastard who's going to give him one lucky punch and it may hit the temple in his head or something like that. I've got two identities. I'm you, Turner. But yet again, there's another person inside of me. I'm me. But the other side of me is my OCD. I am two people. I'm trapped in my own world. Obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, 
is a mental disorder that consists of recurrent intrusive thoughts or images or urges which are extremely anxiety provoking and distressing and that leads the individual to either avoid the situation or activities that provoke them or to do various compulsions, things you have to do over and over again until you feel comfortable, till it feels right. Hughes type OCD is a recurrent intrusive thoughts and especially images of tragic events happening to his family which he feels he has to protect. He has a wide range of rituals, order and symmetry and tidiness which he feels that he has to do over and over again until he feels comfortable. A lot of these rituals that he's been doing have functioned by avoiding, I think, a lot of the, th the thoughts and images that he has. You know, whilst he does them, it stops him thinking about these images that he finds so terrifying. If I do the rituals and do my counting, checking and enumerating the and things like that, I think so, well, the family's safe. He feels that he's protecting his family, it's safe and comfortable, but of course, he is completely destroying his family. After many years handling Hugh's obsessive behaviour, Maureen has learned to shrug off his constant desire for order. Now you need to get here now, aren't you? You need to what he's waiting for to get in my spec. <laughs> he's dying to clean the pan. He's trying to take over and all then. Why don't you just chill out and go sit on the chair? I can't, I can't sit down, you know, I can't sit down for the minute I get up in the morning. You know, I can't sit down, can I? Hugh really can't stand still for a moment. For him, the simple act of Maureen preparing a meal in the kitchen is an anxiety-provoking act of desecration. Jimmy, you don't need two of us. It's all right, leave it. Yeah, I want to let you go. At least we get a bit of peace now, you be so. Keep me in peace. <laughs> he gets worked up and he's pacing up and down. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's got to be perfect with you. It's okay. It's perfect there. Life's not perfect, is it? Which it isn't. Everything's okay over there. But you just have to get on with it, won't it? It's okay. Everything's all right over there. Everything's all right here. Everything's spot on in this, uh, this room, like, at the very minute, like, you mean everything's spot on? House is more like a show house, to be honest. Yeah, you tell them what your granddad's like. You know him. <laughs> and there is one ritual I've not really talked about, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you, totally. I'd, I've done it behind your backs, but what it is, I swipe my chest 12 times over. When Yui comes in, the first thing he'll go is that pan. He'll go fancy. You can see it when he comes in. <laughs> I've actually made myself absolutely sore and brute bleed here. I swipe myself 12 times like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And pulling and pulling. Well, you can imagine doing that a few number of times a day, like that, like that, like that 12 times. It is bad. I'm not getting any sexual kicks out of it because it's painful. Are you with me? What are you putting on? I know, I know it's only a grill pan, a knife and fork and a plate, but this to me is a big ordeal, you mean, isn't it? On a scale between one to ten, I think Hugh's problems are probably about an eight or a nine. He's clearly severely handicapped. Uh, he's unable to work, he doesn't have a social life. His relationship with his family is appalling. <laughs> no, roll on, for <laughs> sake. He can't change his clothes. I've struggled that much with rituals through the day. I'll actually go to bed with my clothes on. He's lost all dignity and ability to care for himself. I'm looking for help here, Simon. He's definitely very severe. OCD frequently devastates the family as well, and different members of the family may try to cope in different ways. I think Maureen has been trying to shut it off and to sort of deny it and get away and escape from it as much as she can. But that makes her more distant and separated from you. Okay. I come here just to chill out, just relax and talk to people. I just have that space away from you, a few hours, because you have to. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there and you'll end up counting in 12s. Perfect. And you would. 
And it's not my favourite number because I'm sick of listening to it. I'd sooner do 12 times around the gym than, <laughs> than that. <laughs> That's my dad, there's my mum. When I met Yui, I just thought he was tidy. Part a bit posh, to be honest. Um, and I used to go in the bedroom and nothing was out of place. Well, years ago, I always thought uh, why I started doing these strange things was is, is uh, that I was being tidy. Well, I thought he was tidy. I thought, well, I don't have to clean up after him, that's one thing, but... I mean, it's tidy and tidy. I really wish that I could have gone to my dad and, and said, Dad, why am I doing these three things? And my me, 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 me mum and dad turned and says, pull yourself together. You know what I mean? Till eventually I couldn't stand it no more. I ended up in a psychiatric unit. And even there and then, I was just diagnosed uh, exhausted and depressed. I was never diagnosed with OCD. I was actually in hospital. I was taken to a room, leather bit put in between my mouth, electrodes put to my head. And these electrodes were, were, were put to the side, the side of my head here. And then there was electricity. I still picture it to this day. I was only a young lad, but I can still picture it. It's so painful thinking about it. I had to go in front of a, a panel of doctors and... Uh, I wasn't even better. I had to go home in my own world again. Didn't even tell my parents ever again for a long time. I couldn't tell them because they thought I'd been cured. So for years and years and years, I lived in silence. That's why they call it silent mental illness. Hugh Turner has suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder for over 40 years. Everything in his house must be arranged precisely in its own special place. He believes his compulsive rituals of order, symmetry and counting will keep his family safe from harm. That was okay. For total peace of mind, Hugh must be in control of absolutely everything. Even everyday noises make him anxious. I clicked it once. That's perfect. Frozen food packs can be particularly troublesome. The crackling is making my anxiety rise. What I do is... <laughs> Okay, I've done the noise to stop me from hearing any noises or crack with you like that, so that's perfect. Controlling everything at home is for Hugh a way of controlling the world and keeping his family safe. Okay. Hugh's OCD has prevented him from leaving the house even for a short time. But now, for the first time in over 12 years, Maureen's persuaded him to take her to Blackpool for the weekend. But disturbing his bag will be a massive problem. Oh, we're going to Blackpool, just for one break. Um, it'd be a test for you, and be a test for me too. I've got to get to Blackpool. And that is going to be one big ordeal for me and I just only hope I can make it. It's make or break time now. I'm focusing now. I'm just going to put my stuff into a bag. I might find a 
part of a corpse in it or something or other. I've got visions of chopped heads, chopped arms, everything. I'm not going to move that <laughs> bag. <sighs> there, I'm getting really waves of hot sweats coming on. Real bad waves. There's somebody out there who can help me. I'm throwing a challenge out to anybody who can who can, who can actually help me come overcome this. Hugh may have mustered up the courage to move the bag, but it'll take him some time to pack the clothes he placed so carefully. It will be stressful for him because he's never took things out of his wardrobe, socks or anything. If I'd have lived with Huey for a week and I'd seen what he'd done years ago when I was caught him, I'd have lived with him for a week. I don't think I'd have gone near him, to be honest. I'm not going out water again. You either stick it out or you walk out, don't you? But I've always shown to stick it out. <laughs> it's been a struggle, but Hugh's finally ready to travel. Before he leaves the house, he must make a final check to make sure that everything is safe. Well, ready when you are. I'm just making sure it's all right before I go and then we're ready. I know it's easy to say, I don't know what's going to say. Something that Maureen's all too aware of. If I left Juby for two minutes, he used to say, oh, I'm going back up to check something. I've forgotten something. You can guarantee it was always half an hour late. And he used to nag him like hell. He even finished with him once <laughs> because he got on my nerves that much. This is the longest time that Hughes stayed away from home in years. It's early days, but at least he's managed to get here. Hughes' intrusive thoughts always make him overly aware of impending danger. What's that bus move? For him, a simple trip up the Blackpool Tower is a suicidal mission into unknown territory. Take a deep breath. Mm. Won't just flight, will it? No, thank God for that. Oh, is that speed? No, it's not much speed, that is it? It'd be worth it, in the end. You will be at 380 feet. It's a challenge for Hugh just to stand in the lift. But now he's faced with a new problem a glass floor 380 feet above the ground. Are you okay? You're not walking on that, are you? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see out if you fell down there. Oh, yeah. oh, they won't, they won't much left if you went down there, would they? You'd be, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be a goner, wouldn't you? That's how we'd end up down there, like that. Skull and crossbones, if they like, fell down there, wouldn't we? Oh, there, it's always fun, For any one of us, walking over this glass floor might be tricky. But with Hugh's irrational fears working overtime, for him, it would be an outstanding achievement. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I just think I've done that. I can't believe it, honest. That's one of the greatest achievements for me, that. Hugh may have mastered the tower's heady walk of faith, but back in his hotel room, unpacking his bag is proving to be a much bigger challenge. There's a famous bag. Now, I may go into it or I may not. That's going to be a challenge. If uh, Perhaps tonight I get soaking wet through it in the rain or something like that. I will have to go into that bag to get me all the t-shirts and my jacket bottoms out. But that is going to be a challenge on its own. 
that bag will still it could stay packed up to a good few days after I get home. I've got to do my rituals because I fear harm will come to my grandchild. I feel that I can prevent this from happening by making sure my bag's safe in the corner, making sure the towels are straight, the deodorants in there, the cups are there, the tea bags are all sorted under there, the kettles are straight, the telly's been adjusted because it was on an angle before, morning shoes under the chair there are absolutely in order there as well. I've got to make sure this environment of this room is absolutely safe here. Hugh may feel safe in his hotel room, but the whole point of being here is to relax and enjoy being on holiday, like everyone else. However, Hugh always seems to find something to make him feel anxious. See, he's not even my camera. I know it's worth it. I'm frightened in case all of a sudden the lens of that camera just opens up. I fear that something's going to come out of there and grab me by the throat or something or the like. I mean, I've got visions of that lens cap opening up, gremlin or something coming out of it, and grab me by the throat or something, and ripping the throat out, the Adam's apple, and then going for Maureen and ripping her and dragging her into the sea. You know what I mean, it? And all she's doing is laughing. Hey, hey, don't say that, more for Pete's sake. Bloody hell. Life may be a beach for some. But for Hugh, a beach is potentially a very dangerous place. See that woman coming down here now with bare feet like that? Look, look. She will stand on glass or anything. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's dangerous, isn't it? You want to watch this broken glass down there? You know what I mean? You want to watch your feet, love? You want to watch your feet? I, I, I can see the dangers there of her, 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 uh, on a slither of glass and that, that's it. Their feet, their feet are ruined for life, aren't they? It's made me anxious, made me anxious. Look, look at that. <laughs> Little kid there, no shoes on his feet. I mean, that's everyday life, isn't it? I don't see all that like he sees it. Uh, to me... You just think it's, it's normal, don't I just you? think... It's normal, isn't it? I mean, I know it's an illness, and I mean, maybe I'm green, but sometimes I just think it's like madness, really. But it's not, it's an illness, and it can't be helped. It's just the way it is. OCD is certainly regarded by many people as a secret illness. It's something that people are very ashamed about, that they keep it to themselves. If they're washing their hands, it's in their bathroom behind locked doors. If they're doing their rituals, or order and so on, it's very much a private thing that's kept away from society and, and uh, feeling very ashamed about it. And this is really sad because, of course, it's about bringing it out into the open in order to get the support and help you need. And for many people, they may suffer for 10, 15 years before they finally do get the help that they actually need. The holiday is over, and back at home again, Hugh's anxiety levels are already beginning to rise. If things inside the house have been disturbed, it could take him days to get everything feeling safe again. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the OCD barrier now. I'm fighting it. Maureen's downstairs with the Hoover, and she's knocking the dogs on the floor. She's knocking the kids' toys. She's bumping into the settee and chairs, and she'd probably knock the dog and probably smash it. I just don't know where to start. What are you doing? Don't be throwing my clothes about. Well, don't worry about it, you. There's a bit of clothes I'm putting on later on. Yes, so you're going to put them away. But I don't, throw, you? But I don't throw yours around, do I? Well, you, you do throw mine around, really. Yes, you should do. I, I, I know. Yes, you right. should do. All right, I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not, I'm not get an argument with you over it, all right? It just getting on my nerves. Do, do you know? Do, do you know what? You, you could just throw things in drawers like that, Maureen, and I'm not joking, it's irritating. Why? The key thing is usually in therapy to get the family on board as well so they understand what needs to be done and to help them become like co-therapists and very supportive in helping you to uh, make progress. Have you done that? Yeah. Oh, that one. <sighs> Struggling, though. Yeah, I don't want to know about it. You just got to forget about it. You've had a holiday move. and that's I it. Well, I can't move. I'm, I'm froze. If I have to feel like this every time I come home, I don't think I've ever missed another trip. Yeah, I think you're more too. Adapt. I don't think I could. You'd have to. No, what would you soon do? Let the OCD beat you? And crack you up? Well, it has beat me now today. It's, yeah, but it, you don't let it do you? It's beaten me more. I've no more fight left in me. Well, you don't give in, you Like hey. a ball, you bounce back, don't you? I know, but I've, I've no fight left. Well, you have to. Oh, how'd you think? <laughs> it's, uh... Oh, thanks. 
Hugh simply can't cope by himself. Even if it's only at the end of a phone line, he needs the support of a counsellor to get him through his crisis. Hi, I've, I've froze in my bedroom. I'm actually, I'm absolutely froze. What it is, I'm really, I'm really getting anxious. It doesn't sound as if you're very well at the minute, Hugh. No, I'm not very well. <laughs> I, 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 this is the worst day of my life now. I'm not coping very well. Hugh has hit rock bottom. He needs help, badly. But after 40 years of obsessive compulsive disorder, is there any hope at all of a cure? It's absolutely incredible that, that here's a man who's had nearly 40 years of OCD and that such, you know, very simple procedures can actually perhaps, you know, probably make a very good chance of recovery. And uh, one of the difficulties in OCD is getting access to good services in psychological treatments. When the man above gave me this illness, I, I, I think he's been very cruel. The OCD now is telling me to kill myself. Hugh Turner has battled against his obsessive compulsive disorder for more than 40 years. He wants to be free from his rituals and has finally been referred to one of the country's leading OCD experts. The rituals are exhausting and take up all of his time. But Hugh finds comfort in them too. To do this now, it's a great relief. It just feels like you've had sex. It just feels, oh, it's fantastic. I've just had sex and it's, it's that great relief. You with me? It may be a great relief while Hugh's in control, but it's torture when he isn't. You finished? I know you didn't help my dogs morning, but you need to need to touch. I never it. touched your dogs. No, so you don't didn't, go on. You need to cause them with a little lead. No, I didn't touch them. You made my On scale between one to ten, I think Hugh's problems are probably about an eight or a nine. He's clearly severely handicapped. One of the difficulties in OCD is getting access to good services in psychological treatments. In the hope of a cure. Hughes travelled to London to meet consultant psychiatrist Dr David Veal. But back at home in Liverpool, Hugh's eldest son, Mark, has come to a realisation. Well, to be honest, when he went to London, I've realised when he's not there, I do his rituals type of thing. And I've only just realised that from when he left, where this weekend to go down London. It's the way he does it, he's just, he just gets frustrated and stuff like that. I know where he's coming from type of thing. From like, because I've done it when he went there, like. I don't have time of laces. Like, he counted 12s, but I count threes. I pull my laces three times to make sure they're tight. I don't know if it's the same as my dad, but I've always got to do that, like. And once I've done it, it's... <laughs> the Priory Hospital, North London. Dr. Veal has asked that for support, Maureen should also be there with Hugh. It's very clear to me that your diagnosis, you're clearly suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder, that you also have some depressive symptoms and also problems with alcohol, right. yeah? But if you didn't have OCD, you wouldn't have the depression and the alcohol, is that right? That's right, problem. yeah. The problem now is of recurrent intrusive thoughts and images That's right. of harm, severe harm and so, death um, coming to your family. Coming to your family. Yes. So, so the problem I'm saying is the way you view these thoughts and images, yeah, right. because you treat them as somehow real events that are gonna happen, Right. And therefore, you become responsible for preventing them from happening. Yeah. Yeah? Let's try and uh, dance with, with death, shall we? Let's try and make bad things happen. Right. Can we do that? So, yeah, go on. If you're, if you're willing to, to do that. I'm willing to have a go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the most common intrusive thoughts and images that keep popping into your head? My son's going for a British title soon. 
and I totally worry that something's really drastic going to happen today because every time I get to the ring, I fear that he's going to get a nasty punch in the head. And then he's going to shut some of his cells down. Yeah. Get, get that picture in your mind. Imagine him in the ring. I've got in the picture, he's coming to the third round now. This guy's come back with a flying kick. He's actually gone down. I'm freezing because I'm... I, I, no, 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 keep going, keep, keep going. going. Keep going. You've got that there, he's dead. Just accept it then, just accept allow it. it to be there. Accept it. Can you write it out? Yeah? A few times. Mark is dead. Mark is dead. Just, just say out loud what's going on. Mark's dead. Mark's dead. Mark's dead. Just, just, just try and say it out loud. Remember, this is for you to try and be a good family man. Yeah, this is what would, would, why we're doing it. To beat your OCD, yes? Is, is there a nice picture in your, in your mind now? I can picture it. So Mark is dead. That's really good, well done. And you're not doing anything in your head to undo it at all? No. No? And that's... That must be very anxiety-provoking for you. Yeah. Right. Is that the first time you've ever really faced up to any of those things? Yeah, that's the first time I've really done something In like that. In 40 years? In 40 years, yeah. Mm. So how are you feeling now? What it is now is, my anxiety's dropping. Right. I mean... <laughs> that's quite a relief. <sighs> so... What, what I'm hoping... What, what's it, does, it does feel good. It feels good. You've got it out of your system, haven't you? Thoughts and images are just thoughts and images. They're just mental chatter. That They're just your worries. That's right, yeah. Yeah? That they're very normal. You should have them. Right. Because you're a very strong family man. They're just it's thoughts. Just thoughts, aren't they, like you mean, yeah? Right. yeah. And in other words, you can do this without having to do your rituals. The message here today is, look, this is very definitely treatable. You can definitely make progress and, you know, really get your life back. Yeah. Hugh may be starting to get his life back, but 40 years of obsessive behaviour can't be undone in one afternoon. I'm not sure. He's made progress with Dr Veal's therapy, but back on his own turf. He's struggling to cope. Tonight, Mark's girlfriend is cooking the family meal. Michelle is in Hugh's space now, and that's making his anxiety climb. What is that Just leave it here so I can pull the potatoes. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. I feel like Tony's a f off, to be honest with you. You, 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 you. you know what I mean? I'm not an aggressive person, but the way I see her in that kitchen there now, I could, I could absolutely kill her. Are you with me? Usually makes more mess than this, like you mean. I'm... I never. Yeah, oh, yeah. Never, never. I always clean up no, 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 no. But it's it's but me. It's me. It's, 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 no, it's never good enough. It's never good enough. No, it isn't. No, it's never good enough. No. You really get on my <laughs> nerves now. See, this is the best part about it. I'm in my own house, and I'm being bossed about by you. You with me? I'm in my own house and being bossed about with you in your own kitchen, where this is my territory. Whoa, he drives me wild. What, with passion? Uh, you wish. With passion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. And he knows it because we do tell each other. So you, you won't think this is my own, but my house, you know what I mean? When Yui's on his own and Michelle's gone back home and everyone's gone to bed, you can get him, Yui's sitting there all hours. It's about two o'clock in the morning. Make sure everything's you perfect. Yeah, a little drop. And you can guarantee he won't sit in that bed till about half two, because he'd be straightening this, that and the other. Hugh's unable to eat a meal with the rest of his family. 
His compulsion to complete his rituals is too strong to allow him to sit down and enjoy himself, even for a moment. Not so just nerves <laughs> Nothing's right in here. What? Nothing's right in here. Well, there he comes. Most nights, Hugh feels the need to drink before bed. But Maureen's not sure that whiskey is the right oh. medicine for Hugh's illness. You drink it like f off. I know, that's what we have done over well, the years, isn't it? I know. Let's face it, it doesn't do you any good, does it? It might no. help you sleep, but that's about all. That's all. It's that's not doing your insides good. Hey, Michael. You have to be. Michael is also unconvinced about his dad's drinking. Sometimes he thinks he's talking to Michael and he repeats himself about 12 times. He'll say one conversation and go on to another, but he repeat, he repeat, won't he? And Michael flips. Repeats himself. And he doesn't like him sort of having a drink of the night. Uh -huh. Do you? Because he, he said he's, he's trying to talk to him and he slurps. <laughs> Just fine. That's a good impression, isn't it? <laughs> then he gets his whiskey, fills that up, and puts it in water, swigs it, starts yapping on, then he does it again, then he does it again. He can't just, he has to stand out there, then he has to swig his glass. But mm. well, I mean, I just tell him to shut up and stop going on at him because it does annoy you. You, you get it on your nerves. Just repeating. There's a secret side to Hugh's life too. He saves his most compulsive behaviour for night time, when his family are in their beds, sleeping. I do a lot behind the backs. If they was up now, and to see me going through what I've actually gone through now, I think it crippled them because I think I think it upset them more to see me the way I am, like on my hands and knees, really suffering, and the anxiety is really making me feel bad. Alone at night, Hugh's obsessions take on a horrifying intensity. Tomorrow, his son has a kickboxing challenge fight. To protect Mark in the ring, Hugh must make sure everything in his world is absolutely safe. What a life, not a life at all. Doing this, I should be in college learning something, or educating myself, or reading books, or, or taking more care of my family and things like that, but I'm just doing these things. My life's just wasted with OCD, it's, it's totally wasted. Perfect. Just listen to that perfect click. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's perfect. That feels great. I've done that. It feels great. But everything I do is, is like nervous energy or uh, I'm, 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 I'm totally exhausted. OCD is my mate. He's my mate. He's my, he's my soul mate. And at night I said, please leave me alone. I beg you leave me alone. But it, it doesn't, Simon. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just living hell. I'm living hell, mate. Living hell. Hugh Turner's obsessive compulsive disorder is driving him harder than ever. Today is a big day for the Turner household. Son Mark has a kickboxing challenge fight coming up in just a few hours. 
To protect his son in his upcoming fight, Hugh's rituals have achieved a new intensity. Everything I do is like nervous energy. It does drain the strength from your body. Mark is overweight by two kilograms. It's only two hours before the fight, and he must lose the extra weight. This level of physical effort so close to the match is draining Mark's strength too, causing Hugh to worry even more about Mark's safety in the ring. It's really getting me down this ball. F***ing hell, it's getting me down. Just one stupid item sometimes really gets me down. Just knowing that I just can't get it right, it really, 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 really irritates me. No ones, yeah, no ones. Eighty-five nine. Yes, get in. We're under the way today. Get over there now. Supposed to order a drink. Ah, that's a good lad. Don't be frightened, of Daddy. Fine-tuning the position of the dog's water bowl may seem futile at a moment like this, but for Hugh, it really is a matter of life or death. Definitely, I would hope that he would go to this event and uh, to use the skills that he's been learning to apply to it at the time, to uh, support Mark, be a good family man. The first bout of the evening is underway, and Hugh's anxiety is causing him to feel physically ill. Sick of the anxiety, he's been vomiting again, vomiting again, it's been terrible. It's a, a, a bit of a rough night, pretty terrible, honest. The real test for Hugh is about to begin. Will he be able to put his new therapy into practice? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we move on now with the action. An international bout, England versus Ireland. A contest of four rounds. Two minutes each round to be fought on the full contact rules. In the blue corner, from Ireland, It's here, the moment that Hugh has been dreading. Mark's been pushing to the Adam's apple. This guy's come back with a flying kick. He's actually gone down. Hugh mustn't fight his own vivid thoughts and morbid imaginings. Mark's dead. Mark is dead. Mark is dead. He died in the rain. Hugh must see them through. And as for Mark, he's full of life. And on top of this fight, It's a win for Mark, and a proud father has been asked to present the fighters 
their trophies. You, you put me through hell tonight, aren't you, bugger? Hey, we're going to fear you. Have to keep really you under your toes. I know. Hey, I'll see you later, there, yeah? Yeah, OK, mate, have a drink, mate. Hey, see you, mate. The excitement is over. Mark's won his fight. And Hugh's overcome his fears to be there and support his son. But later that night, Hugh is straight back to his old ways. Perhaps he's confused. Was Mark's victory the result of all the rituals he performed? Or would he have been safe anyway? There is one thing, though, that Hugh can say for sure about his rituals. It's like just having sex. Wallace? When I go like that, and I go, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I know you're laughing. Is that all it means, sex? No, 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 that's how it feels. <laughs> it feels like mean? a sexual... It's, it's, it's like a freedom of, of just... That, everything, everything's uh, just... Oh, it's great. You have never told this before, Maureen, but it's true. It just feels like a sense of real relaxation and things like that, like, and it, it does release all the tension. He's got a sex life in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Will you like it all? Hugh's recovery will be a hard fight too. But now, with a referral to a 12-week course of intensive therapy with psychiatrist Dr Veal, Hugh feels it's time to say goodbye to his old mate, OCD. God, love you. I want to break free from OCD. I really think it's about time uh, it, it give me a rest. You mean, for once in my life, I, I, I think he needs to give me a break. I fought long enough with him. Perfect.